let's get over this forgotten war thing. And this was a war, not a, not a police action. They call it police action. It was a war. People got killed. We lost a lot of 36,000 men we lost over there. You know, let's remember what these, did, these fellows did. You are about to embark upon the Great Crusade to meet this mounting aggression. And make no mistake about it, good will prevail. I was born in San Diego, California, 1930, and been there ever since. And you worked in your father's fishing business, correct? I did. I was a tuna fisherman, yes. What did you do in that job? I used, uh, used to pull, pull in the tuna in those days when we first started, and eventually we were in the net, nets, per se, netting. That's a lot uh, of work with a pole. That's a big oh, fish. Yeah. When you were in the end of the, end of the day, you, need, you know you did a day's work. <laughs> so you were actually drafted in 1951, correct? I was. And what was your reaction to that? Uh, I was ready to go. You know, I was ready to go. I was inducted in Fort Ord, California in February 1951. What kind of training did you do? Uh, uh, mostly infantry training. Three months infantry training. So you knew that the war was on when you were drafted. Did you expect to go? And what were your thoughts before you got there? Uh, a little scary. You know, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I got married probably two months before I was inducted and uh, left behind a wife, a young wife, and uh, uh, got her pregnant before I went overseas. I wanted to make sure I left a little mark behind, you know. And so, uh, but uh, it was a little scary, I didn't know what to expect, you know. Had you heard of Korea before the war started? Not, not really, <laughs> not really. Seems that's true of a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, uh, what unit were you with? I was with the 2nd Infantry Division, uh, 23rd Regiment, F Company. We arrived in Japan and did a couple of weeks training in Japan. And they shipped us down to Sasebo, Japan. Put us on a ferry boat that night, a huge ferry boat. We ended up in Pusan, Korea, where we landed. And they trucked us up to uh, toward the front line where we were assigned a unit. Okay. And um, how soon were you in combat after you were in Korea? About a week after, about a week later. And what was that first combat experience like for you? It was uh, pretty scary. At first, uh, we, uh, I arrived there at a place called the Punch Bowl. And uh, it was signed to F Company. And we, and we were, uh, first day we went down to do a company patrol into a North Korean village because they were supposed to be stacking supplies there. We were supposed to go down and burn it out. And terrible experience. Uh, going down the hill, the company commander steps on a landmine, blows his foot off, and that wasn't very really good to see. Uh, that was your first day in combat? Yeah. What did you do after that? Watch where I stepped very carefully after that. How would you describe your role as an infantryman in combat? What was that like when you were on the lines engaged with the enemy? It was, you know, it's pretty scary. Yeah, at first I was pretty scary. But after you're there a while, you got used to it, you know, where you could get, you weren't comfortable, but you got used to it. Because you have a, every day's artillery coming in or mortar rounds coming in. And, and uh, but we were on the main line, dug in on foxholes. You had a foxhole buddy with you. And uh, we looked out for each other pretty good. How did the Battle of the Punch Bowl unfold? Uh, well, we were, Punch Bowl led into the, uh, we took the Punch Bowl and that led to a place called Bloody Ridge, which was in August of 51. And Bloody Ridge led into Heartbreak Ridge which was in September of 51, and that's where it all led like that. Let's talk about Bloody Ridge uh, for a, a little bit. What was the objective there, and what do you remember about your own service at Bloody Ridge? Oh, Bloody Ridge, uh, we, we took Bloody Ridge. Well, well, I gotta, this is kind of not funny, but I don't really remember. Each, 
each day had a turn where you just got to fill up the water canteens. So that day was my turn to do it, so I went down to the, where the line I went down the back to the river. So I kind of come around this big boulder, there's this North Korean with a burp gun leaning against the rock, and I had my rifle on my shoulder. I said, oh my gosh, he's got it. And I looked down, it was all black. He got hit by a napalm bomb, that's where he died. And I said, oh my gosh, thank God for that. <laughs> and then I got the canteen filled. Then we went up, uh, so then we're going to September, the first day of September. No, it was the first day, it was September uh, the 13th of September. We jumped off for Heartbreak Ridge. And uh, our, our, my squad was a point. And we ran into a lot of fire, ma uh, machine gun, mortar fire. And we tried to take the other to back off. A North Korean tank comes around the corner and he lays some, started laying some rounds in on us. And we were kind of run back to try to get into our foxholes. And uh, he went one side around here, went around there, and threw around the line right in the middle and wiped out my whole squad but me. I'm a survivor. My good friend J.C. Coffey had it, got it shrapnel in his face. Edwin Solinsky got it in the back of the head. And we had a couple of Korean boys who used to carry ammunition for us. They lived with us because they had the homes. And they, they were killed. And, uh, and I was uh, taken down to the, a couple of kind of, uh, had a couple of boys, Korean boys take me down to the uh, Aid, aid station, where uh, and I got down there, and I was, to be honest with you, I was battle fatigue. I laid on a litter, and, I, and uh, I'll never forget where there was a French, we had a French, uh, French uh, regiment attached with us, 23rd regiment. He was a French chaplain, he spoke broken English. And I just, I just broke down. I couldn't hold it back anymore, and he. I guess he was trained to do this, but he just calmed me down. And then we had so many casualties up there that uh, they had a couple of uh, hospital ships that were full of all age, so they shipped me off to uh, Tachikawa Air Force Base Hospital. I laid in a hallway there for a day because they had so many that couldn't get to me right away. They pumped me full of penicillin. And, and uh, I was in there for a month and they cleaned all the shrapnel. I went back to my unit. Were you injured in that attack? I had a shrapnel across my stomach, yeah. But it was uh, not real bad, but enough to put me in the hospital. One of the things that you can do that others can't is tell the stories of those who didn't come home. So what would you like everyone to know about your friend J.C. Coffey? You know, he was an 18-year-old boy. Joining, he lied about his age. He was joined the Army when he was 16. And this kid was tough as nails. He's the kind of kid you follow hell and back. Just had no fear. Little guy, tough as nails. You wouldn't want to tangle with him. And uh, we come really, really good for him and uh, Edwin Solinsky, Pollock kid from uh, Illinois. We were really, the three of us were really close. And. Uh, what, what was hard on me when I came home, I, uh, the last one, was, I felt I should call his mother, Coffee's mother, and we both sobbed on the phone, you know, she said, oh, I begged him not to go with my only son. Uh, yeah, I am going to break down there. So I got a little emotional. But, but uh, his mother was, uh, Really sad, she because she was the only son they lost. She lost. And I went back to when I went by, back to Korea in the hospital. I'll never forget Christmas Day in 1951. We had a uh, one of our tanks was not had knocked out in front of the Korean. Uh, I think it was Hill 1052, and right at the base of the hill. So our platoon on Christmas Day, because they sent a tank out for a tank retriever to help put it by, retrieve the tank, U.S. tank. So we have to have infantry around to protect it. So it was, we started behind the tank, we started getting machine gun fire hitting on us, we were behind the tank. Finally got out to the position, so we, 
we're going to put a perimeter around it. And there was an, uh, an empty North Korean bunker over there across the field. So the sergeant told me to take a position through. I run across the field. Got halfway across, I stumbled, and machine gun fire was hitting all around my rear end like this. And, and uh, jumped into the bunker. And funny, there was a, uh, a little poster in there, a propaganda poster from the North Korean. Show this guy, this guy with a big cigar in Miami Beach with his good looking babes all around him. He said, G.I., what are you doing here? Look at this guy. <laughs> I, I, I still have that at home. Wow. What kind of weapon did you have? M1 rifle. I, I had an M1 rifle when I was wounded in Korea. Then when I came back, I trained for a F4 forward observer for 81 millimeter mortars. Talk about that role. What was what was your job in that capacity? Well, I was a forward observer. I was up on the front line, and I would direct fire from uh, the mortars, give them a, give them a uh, position, yardage, and all that uh, to lay in the mortar rounds. And when I, towards the end of my career in Korea, I, we were out on outposts. We were on an outpost out there for uh, for three weeks, and. Uh, we had an outpost in the middle of the valley. We were like three or four miles in front of the main line. And the North Koreans had their outpost in front of us. We'd get up in the morning, we'd wave at them, and they'd wave back at us. So then we'd open lay some mortar rounds in on them. You know. They'd do the thing back to us. And, uh, and uh, it, uh, But the thing was, uh, to get to that outpost, you'd have to come over the hill and you go in this valley. And the minute you're exposed in that valley, you're going to get a lot of artillery on you. And you have to go like crazy to get there. And we were up on like this hill, and we had a, uh, there was only one way you could get it through the backside, which we had booby trapped. And there were uh, steps dug into it. And we had, uh, had a bunkers all around it, you know. That. And uh, so when I rotated, I rotated from that, from that uh, outpost. And we were leaving and on a jeep, and we we're going to the artillery man. I was trying to go, hang on until we get over this hill. I got over the hill, oh boy, I just let my breath out, home safe. Talk a little bit more about your job as a forward observer. You were calling in where the mortar fire ought to go. Who were you in communication with? Uh, with, with a gun pit behind me. They had a gun pit set up. It's almost like artillery, you know. Like, uh, I'll tell you, I have four observers. Uh, this is a little smaller 81 millimeter, you know, with a lid in the tube. And, but uh, just give back, give them yardage and uh, what, what do you, HE, high explosive or uh, phosphorus or whatever. And kind of try to lay it in on the bunkers. Give me an example of a call in code. Uh, let's see, it's been a long time. <laughs> HE. 500 yards, and then they would set a mortar, a mortar shell. They had packets on there with, with uh, like a shotgun, you know. Mm -hmm. And whatever yardage you used, you used so many, so many packets. So they put the packets in and drop it. And, uh, left 500, 200 yards, or right 200 yards. Uh, right there, you got it. All right, fire for effect, and they just start laying them in there. Very interesting. Very interesting. How do you want Korean War veterans to be remembered? Uh, well, the sacrifices that they made, you know. And let's, let's get over this forgotten war thing. And this was a war, not a, not a police action. They call it a police action. It was a war. People got killed. We lost a lot of, 36,000 men we lost over there. 103,000 casualties. You know, let's remember what these did, these fellows did. And, and not only that, the families, their families, you know, they deserve recognition too. Finally, sir, what are you most proud of from your time in service? That I, gosh, that I served in the 2nd Infantry Division, 2nd to none, 23rd Regiment F Company. I'm proud of that, proud of the U.S. Army.